guys welcome back to another video today we are doing another camera review on the fuji gw690 this guy the mm -hmm. texas leica mm -hmm. currently loading it <laughs> we've talked about this camera a couple times before in our camera lineup video but today we're going to be going a little bit more in depth so we're gonna be shooting with it and then we're gonna be reviewing it just as we did in our show camera review. So stick around till later in the video when we'll be talking about the camera and hopefully you can learn something because this isn't a camera that we've heard that many people talk about. We thought this would be a good camera to review just because it's kind of unique and it's not a very popular camera. It's not a very common camera that a lot of photographers use or use often. And it's a rangefinder medium format. So it's just a very interesting and unique camera that um, we really enjoy. And I've, I've gotten a lot of cool pictures with and we'll show you some of the, the funky features and some effects that it has. But overall, it's, it's this pretty cool camera that um, we're excited to share with you guys. We're gonna be loading some Velvia 100. One thing about this camera that can be cool and also very not cool is if you don't roll this tight, it'll roll on this spool loosely. And when you take it out, you can get light leaks on the bottom of, of your film, like the very edges. The way to avoid that is if you if you develop your own film, then you could just take it off in your dark bag or whatever you use. Dark bag would be best. Or just, just be very careful to keep it as tight as you can. I think that's pretty tight. Kind of roll it so it doesn't slip out. Go with it. Okay. Then you want to bring the start all the way to this red dot here. So hopefully I roll this tight enough because we're going to load another roll in it. I mean, the worst thing that's going to happen is we'll have some light leaks on the edges. It's not like it'll ruin the film. Here we go. Yeah, so it came out good. Just got to pay attention when you're doing it to roll it tight, as tight as possible.
with the review section of this video of the Fujika GW690. This bad boy right here. So like I said before, it's a rangefinder, 6x9, and because it's 6x9, if you're shooting 120 film, it only shoots 8 exposures. If you have 220 film, then obviously it's going to be doubled. So you're going to get 16 exposures. I actually bought some 220, so I'm going to be putting it in this camera hopefully soon. It's expired in 2015, I think. So I want to shoot that sooner than later. Okay, so as Jake just mentioned, this shoots a 6x9 negative, which if you've never shot any medium format camera that shoots that size before, you might not know exactly how big it is. And it is, this is the entire negative size comparison. It is the biggest medium format negative that you can get. There's 6x5, 6x6, 6x7, and then 6x9. Right? 6x8. Is there 6x8? I think they make a 6x8. They do. Fuji makes a GW680 and they also make a GX680. So this is the biggest medium format negative you'll get before you move up to something like a 4x5. As you can see, this is pretty large, so it gives you a very smooth negative. It's the exact same ratio as a 35mm negative you would be able to do the same compositions with this as you would with the 35. The obvious difference being that this camera is much larger than a 35 millimeter camera, but your compositions portrait and landscape will look the same because the negative size is the same ratio as a 35 millimeter. So this camera is a really good medium format camera, in my opinion because it's nice that you're able to do your turning portrait to landscape as easily as you would with a 35 millimeter camera. It is rather large, it's bigger than my face. So this is not as heavy as like another medium format camera like the Lumia RB67 that Jake also has. The good thing about this camera is even though it is large still, um, it's much easier to handle than something say it's the Pentax 6x7 where just like this one, you can turn it as easy because it's shaped like a 35 millimeter camera, mm -hmm. but it's much heavier, much heavier in the lens is very heavy and so it's pretty hard to hold and you kind of usually need to have like a handle on the side to be able to hold it properly but it's like a left-handed thing and it's just a little bit more difficult to hold than this so this is a really nice camera to actually easily bring up to your face and take a picture the lens is fixed like most are all rangefinders there's three of these they made first one was the fujika and i think the second one they went to just fuji and i think it's GW692 and the Fuji GW693 was the last one they made. But I have the first one and this thing's in really good condition. And the bottom here has a counter and it counts how many rolls you've shot in the camera. So that's kind of cool. There's 168 has been shot on this. It's just pretty interesting that a camera can have mileage. Yeah. I thought that was a pretty cool <laughs> feature to see, especially because obviously this is a pre-owned camera. So you're able to see how many rolls have been through this camera in its entire lifetime. Okay, so a little bit more about this being a rangefinder camera. Because it's a rangefinder, you are only looking through the viewfinder, so you're not seeing through the lens. So you always have to be careful if you might still have your lens cap on. And you, it's possible that you could take a picture and not know it and still have your lens cap on because you aren't seeing through the lens. As with another camera, you would obviously see black if you had your lens cap on. So that's one thing that you have to be careful of. Another thing is that with rangefinder, it's basically putting the two images together and as soon as they're together, that's when your picture is focused. And so with this, there's kind of a little circle light in the viewfinder, which highlights the area that you're trying to focus on. Sometimes your camera is slightly tweaked and you can't see the little yellow circle where you need to focus. So I just kind of reset myself up and then I could see it again. You just change the camera slightly and then I can see the little circle and then I'm able to focus. But it's just a matter of lining up the two images perfectly. So, but if you get it right, this thing has super good focus, but it takes a little practice. So when you get it, you like really, really get it. And that's a plus for this even being medium format and such a large negative it's already giving you such a smooth image and then once you get it really really focused it's 
your photo is gonna look very nice. The other thing we've learned about with this camera, and it was all, it was completely an accident. It has a feature, which is really not a feature. If you're doing a long exposure shot on a tripod at night of say a neon sign or anything with lights, you would put, you would set it on T and then however long you want to do it. So you take the picture and then once you take the picture, you wait about five seconds or depending on your aperture. And then what you do, since this camera winds twice because it's such a big negative, you wind it once while it's still on the tripod after you took the picture. Once, once you wind it the first time, the shutter will close. And then what happens is it does the neon bleed. And so the neon literally stretches down the frame because it's starting to pull the frame and it kind of, it has a really, really cool effect. It's super cool and it, it works landscape too, but it's best to do it like, best to do a portrait because it pulls it down. You could do a landscape but then it's gonna pull it sideways and it doesn't look as cool. But yeah, that's something really cool that we learned about by the homie Tim Instagram. We'll put right there <laughs> or somewhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, he has a bunch of cool examples of using this camera and neon bleeds. It's a really special effect that basically only this camera can do, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it gives like a nice cool touch that doesn't require any post editing. Mm -hmm. Overall, I think it's a really cool and unique and fun camera. It seems very underrated, which I like. So overall, I think this camera is really worth the price. So this camera is a 90 millimeter 3.5 lens. It produces very good photos. It's kind of convenient if you want a shorter roll to shoot since it's only eight images. Mm -hmm. Some people can't shoot through like a whole roll of 35 or anything, so they just want shorter, shorter, shorter. So this one you could go through pretty quick, only eight exposures. And I think that this camera is a very would be a very nice addition to your collection if you like shooting medium format. Or if you're used to shooting 35, like I mentioned earlier, and you want to start medium format, this would be a nice one to get mm -hmm. you into, you know, experience with rangefinders if you haven't had experience with them before, as well as a nice transition from your 35 millimeter camera. Cause like I said, the negative comes out with the same ratio as the 35 millimeter. So the composition will be very, very similar to what you're used to doing on your 35 millimeter camera. So this would be a nice transition camera if you want to get into medium format and it would be a nice addition to your collection if you already shoot medium format so that you can have experience with different sizes of negatives mm -hmm. because now Jake has a 6x6, 6x7, and a 6x9. So <laughs> whenever he decides he wants to shoot a 6x9 negative today or a 6x7, it's nice because he has those options. You might prefer one size over the other for a certain occasion or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's really nice and a reason to consider checking out this camera. And maybe you'll be able to have some fun with this camera like we have. So we hope you enjoyed this review and we hope to do more camera reviews. This is only our second. So let us know if there's anything we miss of things you might have wanted to know. And thank you for joining us for another video. <laughs> we hope you learned something about this really cool camera and maybe you'll go and check it out for yourself. <laughs>